Good morning, everybody. It's Kim. Today, I am going to use up that banana that I bought, and I'm going to make some banana muffins. I have a very well-greased six muffin pan because I have my recipe once again. In this bowl, I have my banana, a banana and a half would actually be better, but this is a pretty good sized banana. I have two tablespoons of regular sugar and four tablespoons of brown sugar. Now, generally, most a lot of recipes call for just plain white sugar. I happen to like brown sugar because I think it adds a lot more flavor to stuff, so that's what I chose to use. So I'm just going to mash everything together really good here, and then I'll get ready to add the rest of the wet ingredients. I have my sugars and my banana well combined. The next couple of ingredients. Now, I'm going to use a very small egg. You could use either the egg yolk or the egg white, or it really wouldn't hurt if you add a whole egg. It's just not going to be um, as cakey, or it makes it more cakey than muffin-like, but it won't hurt anything. Ooh, hey, a double yoker from one of my little girls. How do you like that? That's the first double yoker I've had this year, so I must be having good luck now. Anyway, and I'm going to add two tablespoons of my vegetable oil here. I'm going to mix these well together, and then I will get ready to add the dry ingredients. Okay, that's really well combined. And in my other bowl, I have one cup of flour, one half teaspoon of baking soda, and just a little dash of salt. Um, salt helps bring out some of the sweetness. So I'm going to add this to my wet ingredients a little at a time. You don't want to over mix muffins, they can get tough. So I'm going to add about half, stir that in, and then add the other half. Now I hope you guys don't think this is cheating, but I was digging through my cabinets last night organizing and I found a little tiny jar that I have some leftover mini chocolate chips in and <laughs> let's pretend I was foraging through my cabinets. No, I'm like I like I encourage everybody to um, you know use up the little bits and pieces that you have. If you have some nuts or I don't know if you like raisins, you could add them to your muffins just to add a little something extra to it. So there's the rest of my flour. I'm going to switch over to my spoon. And I'm going to stir in the rest of my flour here. All right, I have the rest of my flour incorporated. And I don't know if I've told you this before, but whenever I cook something, I hold back a little bit. I'm going to put, I'm going to start with a tablespoon. Yeah, we'll go with one and a half. I always hold back some of what I cook with. For example, um, on recipes that call for one pound of ground beef, I use three quarters of a pound and the other pound goes um, in a baggie in the freezer. And if I, the, by the third time I use ground beef, I have like an extra meal with the beef because, you know, three times quarter pound gives me three quarters of a pound that I use. So I did that with chocolate chips. I, mean, I don't even remember the last time I made cookies, so they've been in there for a while. Um, I always hold back some because, you know, you never know if, what you're going to need it for. And just like this, I had a little something to uh, put in my muffins. And I could have put more, but, you know, once again, I'm going to hold it back. And maybe I will be able to use it later in the week. So anyway, I'm going to fill up these muffin tins and get them ready for the oven. These are going to go in my toaster oven, um, which has been preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to check them after 20 minutes. My toaster oven tends to cook a little bit faster than my regular oven. Um, and then I will, you know, need to put them back on if necessary. And I'll tell you the exact time once I'm done. All right, I harvested some green beans from the garden. If you've never grown any type of food, let me tell you, bush green beans are super easy to do, and this is one plant that's producing right now. Oops, I also harvested some nice little bit of raspberries, and I'm going to eat that later for dessert. But I'm going to take the green beans and whatever else 
I could find, I think I have some onion left, um, some of the carrots and whatnot. I'm going to chop those up and get those ready to go in my saucepan. I have my vegetables prepped. I cut up the green beans. I have some carrots. I'm going to use my pink oyster mushrooms. Aren't they gorgeous? Some of the frozen onion. And I'm going to saute these in, I remember I made that broth. I always save the fat on the top. Because the, the fat is got a lot of flavor in it. And if you buy it in the store, it's called schmaltz. And it's very expensive to buy a small jar of this. So anyway, it saves really well in your freezer. And it's great to saute veggies in. I'm going to use some of the broth. Then I'm going to thicken with some flour and some water and some of my chicken. So that's going to be the sauce. All right, so in some of that uh, chicken fat, just like this, I have my onions and my carrots going because I just want to get those soft. Again, they take a little bit longer to cook. Once all my vegetables have been cooked, I'm going to remove them from the pan just for a few minutes because I'm going to make what's called a roux, which is basically flour and a fat. could be butter, lard, even oil. And you stir that together and it will make everything like a gravy. So basically I'm making a chicken and gravy mix right here. It's just using what I have on hand. So I'm going to go ahead and cook these items and get ready to make my roux. Right, I don't want these cooked too much because I'm going to be putting them in, back in the gravy and letting them simmer for a little bit. So I'm just going to move those off out of my pan real quick here because I want to get my roux together. There's still some oil in the pan from the chicken broth fat, but I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons, of, not quite, back. I did scoop it off the top of my jar. That's a little hot. Right. And then I'm going to add a equal parts of flour. So right here is a tablespoon, and if I need more, I will grab it. Usually it's equal parts, and I probably didn't put enough in my little thing to do that for you. So I'm going to have two. Look at it real quick here. So I'm going to stir this. You want to get some of that flour cooked down a little bit because it gives it a richer... Um, feel and taste. You don't want raw flour in any of your gravies. I can always add more later if I need to thicken it more. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab another. I want it nice and thick because I can always add more broth and thin it down too. So that's a nice thing with gravies. See how nice that's starting to look? It's kind of brown. And I know the schmaltz was a little bit brown, but going to make it a nice, the deeper you get this, the richer the flavor. So now I have to get some of the uh, chicken broth in there. So hold on just a minute so I don't pour it all over the stove. All right. I didn't make a mess, but it was pretty close. So I put about a little over two cups. I didn't really measure it of my chicken stock in here. I'm going to cook this for a little bit until it starts to thicken. In the meantime, I'm going to add some salt because I did not salt my broth because I use it a lot for my dogs when I make their food. And if I needed it, I didn't want to have salt in it. And some fresh pepper, a couple of good grinds. And I have some garlic powder. I could have used my chopped garlic, but I didn't, so I put some garlic powder. I'm going to add in my chicken because I want that to get warmed up really well. This is a little, about a cup and a half of chicken. And I'm going to let this thicken. If I need to, I will add a little bit more flour. But I think it should do okay. And then once this is starting to thicken, I'll add my veggies because I do not like mushy veggies. That's why I tend to use fresh as much as possible. So while this is warming up and thickening, I'm going to start the next part. All right, to go with dinner, I could have easily made mashed potatoes and put the chicken gravy over top. 
I could have made noodles, um, gnocchi, gnocchi, but I wanted to try something different, something I haven't done in quite a long time, so we're going to do this together, and that's to make spatzel. Spatzel. I'm going to use one cup of flour. To that, I'm going to add two eggs. If I was making noodles, I would only need one egg uh, yolk, but I think I want to try this. So I'm going to put my two eggs in there. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. If you have it, a little nutmeg makes it kind of nice. Some pepper. And for me, I'm just going to add, I always flavor my noodles. I don't know why noodles have to be plain. Make your own flavor. I'm going to put some garlic in it. Could add some onion powder. I'm going to start by bringing this together with um, a fork and stirring from the bottom and then starting to incorporate some of that flour into it. Now they have special makers. If you make this a lot, you probably have a spatzel maker. Anyway, I'm going to add up to two, up to a quarter cup of milk in here, depending on how thin it gets. That's my toaster oven going. I just started my, just turned my bread on to cook. This is too thick. It's not going to go through, so I have to add more milk. You want it a kind of a loose consistency because you're going to push it through that strainer into your pot or the spatzel maker, and you're going to let it go into the pot of boiling water, and they come out really quick, and noodles are done in, in seconds once they hit that water, maybe two, three minutes. So it has to be thick enough to hold together, but thin enough to go through the holes in my colander. Not sure about the consistency yet. I might need to add a little bit more milk or water, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to use my spinner basket. You could use a, um, if you have a flat uh, grater, you can use that. All you do, I'm going to put this up high so I can show you. You put it in, put some in the basket or your spatzel maker. Your water's boiling and you use something to push it through. I'm hoping it'll go through well enough. If not, I'll have to thin it down just a little bit more. There, and they start dropping into the water. Some nice rapidly boiling water. Let them drop out. And continue to do that and cook them two to three minutes or until they float. So I'm going to just make sure that the ones that they're all cooking at the bottom and that nothing's stuck. Shouldn't if you have a deep enough pan. And I'm going to test one, make sure that it is cooked. Ooh, that's hot. They're a little small but they're really tasty. So that's it. I'm going to fish those out and get our dinner ready to go. Right, there is my dinner. has everything I need in it. Oh, I forgot my garlic bread, so I'm going to grab one of those, and I'm going to sit down and have my dinner. Tonight, I think I'm going to have a big bowl of raspberries because I have them and I love them. That'll be some snack for later tonight. Otherwise, this was, what, day five, I think, and we're still eating pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments below and have a wonderful night.